Welcome back to the Morning Brief. Time now to review some of the big stories, uh, starting with security. We're counting too many resolutions on security, but without commensurate results. This is the position of members of the House of Representatives who voiced their frustration over the failure of relevant authorities to implement numerous House resolutions aimed at tackling insecurity across the country. They maintain that efforts made as contribution to the national debate on how best to address the menace of insecurity have not been considered helpful. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has commenced investigations into what the lawmakers describe as arbitrary increase in the price of cement. This might be the fourth time that we will be observing one minute silence this morning. If you recall, in our last meeting, we were almost tagging our country one Nigerian life one minute silence. I think that we should look at all our resolution that has to do with insecurity, all, all the resolutions. Let us put them together and begin to ensure compliance with some of these resolutions. Because we arrive at resolutions day in, day out, and nothing happens. This house must have a position paper from constituents, particularly in the security prone areas on the issue of employing or bringing back mercenaries to finish security issues in this country so that investors can come in and invest. This hearing arises from the House of Representatives' deep concern for the people it represents and the need for transparent engagement with key stakeholders in the cement industry, particularly the manufacturers. Nigeria's price of cement doubles that of India at a difference of 69%. Similarly, the price is 29% higher than that in Kenya and 39% higher than that in Zambia. Stay with the National Assembly, a decade after the launch of the Abuja Centenary City, the Senate has opened an investigation into the failed project which the 10th Assembly is seeking to revive. The sponsor of the motion, Senator Ashiro Yilola, representing Choir South, notes that the original estimated investment for the project in 2014 was $18.5 billion. The Senate therefore set up an ad hoc committee chaired by the Deputy Senate President to also review the agreement and facilitate an expeditious completion. Completing Abuja Centenary City project, we have immense benefits for Nigeria, including job creation, elevating Nigerian, Nigerian profile as an attractive investment destination for very investment. If we do this and it takes off, it will be a big achievement to the 10th Senate. As it is today, given the state of Nigerian economy, given the abysmal uh, revenue base of Nigerian economy today, I don't think the federal government is in a position to inject any additional fund into that place. And in doing that, I also want to uh, call on the Federal Ministry of Finance to put together a team of investment bankers worldwide. Most, most of these projects of this nature are driven by the private sector. Abuja is already getting congested, and uh, if this is done, I think it will help. So we must take it very seriously. Set up an ad hoc committee to urgently investigate the factors impeding the completion of the Centenary City project in Abuja and recommend ways of reviving same. Those in favor of prayer, I want to say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The ayes have it. Prayer three, urge the federal government to prioritize the revival of the Abuja Centenary City project by providing appropriate support resolving regulatory issues and addressing any other impediments. Meanwhile, the President of the Senate, Senator Godwin Lakwabio, says foreigners are earning more from mining the nation's solid minerals than Nigerians. President of the Senate stated this on Tuesday when he declared open an investigative hearing to review activities in Nigeria's mining industry, primarily geared towards diversification of the economy. We are gathered here with a shared purpose to ask the very tough questions and seek answers, those that will shape the future of this great nation. We 
If I dare to ask an investigator why our national economy continues to rely solely on crude oil, why can't we infuse our economy with the richness of our solid minerals that abound across the entire nation and liberate ourselves from the shackles of oil dependence and even liberate ourselves from insecurity caused by illegal mining? We can no longer overlook the immense potential of the mining sector in this country. The mining sector should by now become a major cornerstone to enable the country to earn foreign exchange, to even be a catalyst for social inclusion and empowerment of the populace. But as usual, just like fishing, more foreigners are earning for our mining sector than Nigerians. Instead, what they leave us with are stories of wars, tales of killings, tales of pursuit of honors of properties in order to enter a mine illegally, and the process compounding, compounding the security situation of our country. And to politics now, in River State, to be precise, where the state chapter of the All Progressives Congress has demanded that members of the House of Assembly commence impeachment proceedings against Governor Simlai Fubara. The party's caretaker chairman, Tony Okocha, said this at a press conference in Port Akkad, where he reacted to the governor's comment that the state assembly members remain in the House as a result, result of his resolve to keep to the peace accord brokered by the President. He further threatened that if the assembly members fail to restart the impeachment proceedings against the governor, he would invoke the party's disciplinary action on them. A member, in fact, is the leader of my own, our own political party. And it would be full of the to be stupidity on our part to sit down to see somebody way less than Mr. President insult Mr. President under our very nose. It is also an absurd to see the governor begin to espouse impunity, intimidation on the people who are members of our political party <coughs> and we stand akimbo, doing nothing. We won't sit here to see the governor declare on his own as if it's a, law, it's a court. He has, he has become Daniel that is sitting in judgment to declare assembly member seats vacant to that extent in, 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 in consultation with my party. We have directed and we are directing, I want to let you hear that we are directing the assembly members, APC members who are in the assembly, to immediately commence the impeachment of Governor Sim Fubara. Well, as far as reverse politics is concerned, there are more surprises to come in the coming days. And that's not all from Rivers. Elder statesman and leader of the Pan Niger Delta Development Forum, Pandef, Chief Edwin Clark, has written to the Inspector General of Police asking him to forestall a breakdown of law and order in River State. The Niger Delta leader says the political situation is capable of snowballing into a crisis of national proportion if not properly handled by the police. In the open letter read to journalists, at a news conference in Abuja, he urges the Inspector General of Police to advise President Sinumbu on the development in the state. More politics away from rivers this time. The senator representing Ondo South Senatorial District, Senator Jimo Ibrahim, is lamenting the outcome of the All Progressives Congress Ondo 2024 governorship primary election held on April the 20th, 2024, describing the exercise as a mega fraud. Senator Ibrahim, who briefed Senate correspondents on the outcome of the exercise, pointed out that the elections did not hold and he wants a fresh exercise to be conducted or the party be barred from participating in the election proper later in the year. 
And one week after he was taken from his Lagos residence by armed men who turned out to be policemen, Mr. Daniel Ojuku, a journalist with an online news platform, the Foundation for Investigative Journalism, FIJ, remains in police custody despite calls for his release. His lawyer, Mr. Abimbola Ojenike, told Channels Television that Mr. Ojuku was taken from his Lagos residence on Wednesday, May the 1st, based on an order from the Office of the Inspector General of Police, Kaya Diagbetukun. The lawyer adds that the reporter has been denied access to his counsel and relocated to the Force Criminal Investigation Department in Abuja. Reacting to the outcry over the arrests, Force spokesman Mr. Muiwa Adijobi says Mr. Ujuku has a case to answer and his arrest was based on a petition against him. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Union of Journalists, the Nigeria National Committee of the International Press Institute, IPI Nigeria, and other civil society organizations and activists have criticized Mr. Ojuku's arrest and called for his release. Well, it's only fair that this would be a good time for, um, you know, the case hovering over Mr. Ojuku's head be explained in proper terms so that uh, you know, Nigerians can know uh, the justification for his arrest. Away from that now, the presidency has announced that uh, President Bola Tinubu and his aides will return to Nigeria from Europe today. A post by the special advisor to the president on information and strategy, Mr. Bayo Nonuga, on his ex-handle says the president and his aides will return to Nigeria from Europe on Wednesday and the president departed on April the 22nd. Uh, for the Kingdom of the Netherlands on an official visit and after the engagements in the Netherlands he proceeded to Riyadh in Saudi Arabia to attend a special World Economic Forum meeting between April the 28th and the 29th. A quick touch on business. The Corporate Affairs Commission, CSE, has said that point-of-sale agents of major fintechs in Nigeria, including Opay, PalmPay, and MoneyPoint, among others, must have registered their businesses by July the 7th, 2024. The Registrar General of the CAC, Mr. Hussein Imagaji, who disclosed this in a statement issued by the Commission, said this was the agreement with the POS operators after a meeting in Abuja on Monday. According to him, the registrations are also in line with the legal requirements and the directives of the Central Bank of Nigeria. And outside our shores, the Israeli military says its troops have taken operational control of the Palestinian side of the Rafah border crossing between Gaza and Egypt. Rafah has been a key entry point for aid and the only exit for people able to flee since the start of the war between Israel and Hamas in October. A tank brigade moved into the crossing area after a night of intense strikes with Israel's Kerem Shalom crossing also closed, the UN warned Gaza's two main aid arteries were now choked off. On Tuesday, the White House said it had been told Kerem Shalom would reopen on Wednesday. And uh, that's it on uh, the top stories now.